Hello, good afternoon everyone. I will start with the video and then start speaking towards the end of it. So this is a fun summer weekend project that I conceived together with friends uh, in the countryside um, of the Design Nature campus, actually, which was mentioned. Um, and it actually, both symbolically and metaphorically, is showing my interest. I'm passionate about design, I'm passionate about nature, and I'm passionate about people, especially when they come together. Um, I grew up in Poland, watching cartoons like most of us. Um, not in Poland, but watching cartoons like all the kids do. And this one cartoon was, uh, that was actually created in my home city of uh, Łódź um, is about this magic pencil that was presented to the little boy by an elf. So every single thing that the boy drew would become reality. Of course, this is an amazing possibility. And the boy went on to draw solutions for everyday life, helping people. But then sooner than later, he noticed that actually quite a lot of the creations have created some problems in consequence. And this cycle has started to continue becoming a big challenge. So this was an influential piece of uh, cartoon uh, made in the city that is known for film industry, uh, all the Polish cinematography, great masters like Polanski, Kishlowski, Wajda, all these people came from Łódź. And uh, I didn't go to the film school, maybe the acting would, would help now, uh, but uh, I went to the architecture department um, to study architecture, um, and I was very inspired by the functional beauty of the city of which architecture, which is known as the, let's call it Manchester, they call it Manchester of the Central Europe, built in industrial revolution for textile industry. Then I moved on to another great context in architecture because I w it was my dream to go to the city that never sleeps. And I took it quite seriously, uh, literally. I did not sleep much there because I not only studied architecture and did a lot of work pulled a lot of all-nighters, worked a lot of the hours in the workshop because I have a great passion for making. And that's when I discovered industrial design as a profession. But my values didn't really align so much with the American values of consumer culture. Somehow I was looking for a deeper meaning of design. And that led me to go to Royal College of Art, where I studied uh, as an, um, and, and then also became the research associate that started my path into the academia. And I had a room all the way up uh, there, look, overlooking the beautiful Kensington Gardens when the phone rang and I was invited to teach in Warsaw. Um, and Warsaw is quite an underrated city, not so known, but it's actually an amazing place both for uh, quality of life and well-being. It's, it's went a long path over the years, and it was really difficult to leave it to come here, but I'm discovering Helsinki also as an amazing place. Um, I'm sure you haven't thought deeply about what's inside your sofa, but that's quite an obsession of mine as I look at furniture inside out and I design them. And actually, sofa is one of the 
may perhaps biggest, apart from maybe a car or a bed, products commonly owned. And it's actually quite an environmental bomb. There's a lot of nasty materials inside bond together um, and um, yeah, staying behind or being burned. When, when, and this, this gentleman here, his name is Viktor Papanek, he has in 70s, 80s uh, been quite a thought, thought provoking when um, cr critiquing the industrial design and architecture. Actually, one of his famous quotes says that perhaps the best thing that architects, planners, and industrial designers can do for humanity is absolutely to stop their um, uh, work entirely. So that rank in my head, creating a lot of moral dilemmas. Um, but instead of going to a shrink, I went to the Royal College of Art to actually find a way uh, to design without um, actually being blo blocked by these dilemmas. As so, so I couldn't stop. Uh, I, I'm, I have a great passion for making, and I was trying to, in one of my school projects you see here, um, actually dematerialize all the internal componentry of the sofa or upholstery furniture, in this case is an armchair. So this is a self-supporting structure that doesn't have anything inside. After graduating, I to took this inside-out way of R&D thinking to make things lighter, less um, impactful for the environment. These chairs actually are awarded for same thing. They are actually empty inside, kind of like a Easter bunny chocolate thing, thanks to the technology of rot rotational molding. The hangers, cold hangers I designed, they made out of production waste, actually offcuts of tubing from a big industrial plant, and the one up in the front here was actually a challenge about trying to make a hanger out of one tube to avoid the welding, which was still done in the other one. So this is be behind a lot of the work, but one of the strategies that I tend to use as well is to try to establish new typology or added value, if you will. An armchair can be also an um, acoustic screen, so you can separate yourself from the surrounding, focus on your work, on your device, but you can also open up to social interaction with others in the public space by simply turning around. Um, another strategy is obviously simplicity, working with quality materials from the forest in this case, and um, doing things that th withstand the test of time, both physically, so they don't fall out of use, but they also don't fall out of fashion. When it comes to designing sofas, I try to provide as much sofa as one needs, so you can get exactly the, the piece you want. It's, it's basically a modular system that you can extend that can fit into an environment precisely. For IKEA, I designed this hybrid, also to limit the belongings that we have within the small apartment, student apartment, uh, instead of having a lamp table and the magazine holder, why, why not to have a hybrid that combines all these functions? Unfortunately, there's no section for hybrids in IKEA, and it went out of production in a consequence. Um, but also, working with high-end craftsmanship with Italian companies or companies in Poland, which you know, create masterpieces, maybe not so egalitarian as IKEA, but at least these are pieces that, you know, are cultural objects, pieces that actually have uh, a power to um, support the craftsmanship and develop it further, pass it to the next generation, which, as we know, is uh, dec declining. Or studying the, clo the quickest path from the forest to the table. This chair is made out of 10 planks of wood, so there's not much machining, manipulation, it's very straightforward. The expression of the chair derives from that approach. Um, or even more radical longevity uh, project, which is called Tables Are Forever, and is cast iron piece that perhaps will stay behind even if we are not around anymore on the planet. Um, the working with architects, actually this is a design by 
Finnish architect Rainer Mahlamaki of a Museum of the History of Polish Jews is always a good way to create pieces with a story that are dedicated to the function, but also to the content of the museum, like in this case. So this longevity and timelessness has been the theme um, due to the context. The brand that I created is based on the same values. The teaching I do is also about togetherness, nature, and um, providing the tools for it. So it's tools for togetherness, if you will. But they also can become, as conceptual design pieces, studies for um, use of materials, testing longevity, testing life cycle, um, or doing analysis. Um, so it has become a big ground for innovation. Also, we developed, therefore, this material, which is made out of um, actually nets that are pulled out from Baltic Sea um, and uh, made into this object. Uh, this was a picture from the museum in uh, Tel Aviv. I also work with these teams with the students. You can see here some of their works, working with the history, with the archive of Polish design, re uh, putting in production pieces that has never had a chance to be manufactured, or working with uh, artificial intelligence. Actually, this student has designed himself out of design and let the artificial intelligence do the project for him. Um, or um, working with innovative use of plywood um, but I think very broadly about the furniture and design, and sometimes it crosses to other genres. But important theme is connection to nature. This student, Antek, he has desi designed this platform system, very light and portable, that he can take now to terrain that cannot be otherwise explored, and actually don't do any damage to the surrounding. So back to this frame, this is again symbolic way to say that I'm very much interested about tools and environments that guide users, us, towards ecological and social behavior. Thank you for your attention.